That's right, a piranha plant has joined Super Smash Bros. Ultimate as the latest newcomer. And it looks to have even confused poor Luigi and the Yoshis here. But you know what? He looks freaking awesome with a unique moveset that pays homage to his... roots. So you know what that means, it's time to run both its reveal and character trailers through the all-analysis machine to try and find out what secrets they might be hiding. But let's step back for a second and talk about the very idea of a piranha plant itself joining the battle. Which is a little unusual for a few different reasons. One, it's a freaking piranha plant, and it marks the first time that one of this kind has ever been playable in a Mario game. Two, as it first appeared in the original Super Mario Bros., it's among the oldest characters in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, right alongside Peach and Bowser who both debuted in the same game. And since then, piranha plants have gone on to become one of the most common and varied species in the Mushroom Kingdom, and that's clearly provided a lot of inspiration for its moveset. Three, not only is it one of the oldest characters in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, but it's no stranger to Super Smash Bros. at all, as it's been part of the series since the very start, first appearing in the classic stage of Super Smash Bros. 64, as pointed out in this clever scene from the character overview trailer. And even though the Prana Plant did appear alongside other characters of that era on that stage, it was the only one to have a starring role in the foreground as an interactive object. In fact, it's the only interactive stage character in the entire game outside of Pokemon. So all things considered, its newcomer status in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate isn't exactly unearned. With that being said, this isn't your ordinary run-of-the-mill piranha plant. Because while most piranha plants call war pipes their home, this one takes residence inside a pot instead. And that's something we've seen only in a handful of Mario games, such as Super Mario 3D World where you could carry them around in a stage or two, and Mario Kart 8 where they appeared as an item complete with tiny little wheels. Aww. But they actually first took root way back in Mario Party 3's minigame Storm Chasers, an entire 13 years before Super Mario 3D World. And technically it goes back even farther than that, at least if you count the Super Mario Super Show as canon, which we're pretty sure Nintendo does not. But he's not just confined to a standard pot, as he has the option to use one that looks like a warp pipe too. Is it trying to make all the other piranha plants jealous? And it's not just a palette swap, but it's an entirely unique model with straight edges, as opposed to the standard pot's narrowing base with a gap at the bottom. Oh, and then there's a little fact that piranha plants have historically been immobile. You know, on account of them being a plant and all. But you know what? Little details like that can't keep this go-getter down, as he's got this whole locomotion thing figured out. But how? Well, the trailer does make it a point to reveal that it runs around using its own little pair of feet, or roots as they may be, that pop out from underneath the pot. It's actually pretty similar to the Batui plants that debuted in Super Mario Bros. 3, who were also capable of bipedal movement. Or is that bipedal movement? So it's only fitting that the music track that plays during the first part of the trailer is based on a track from that same game. Alright, that's enough about the Prana Plants background for now, but there'll be plenty more later. So let's go ahead and take a look at his actual moveset, and we'll start with the basics. First up is what we're pretty sure is a standard neutral attack, in which he can chain together multiple chomps. And look at how big his mouth can get! <laughs> it's terrifying! Next, the actual first attack shown in the trailer appears to be a side tilt, in which he takes a swipe with his pedal. Then his dash attack has him digging his head into the ground to vault his pot forward and into the opponent. Ouch! Moving on to its aerial attacks, we're guessing this one is his neutral aerial, being a multi-hit attack in which it spins rapidly in the air, turning his pedals into saw blades. Then we have what appears to be its forward aerial, in which it slams his pot upwards into the air. It's then followed by its downward aerial, in which he slams his pot downward. Unfortunately, the trailer doesn't seem to show off its back or up aerials. For its grab, it'll hold on with a pedal so it can take a few chomps as its pummel. From there, an up throw sees a plant ramming its mouth upward when biting whereas its forward throw is a simple headbutt. Unfortunately, the back and down throws aren't shown here. So let's move on to its smash attack, starting with the up smash that's a powerful upward bite. For the side smash, Prana Plant transforms completely, growing thorns on the stalk while its head turns black with red spikes, before slamming it into the opponent. And this is a direct reference to the one and only spiny Prana Plant that appeared in Super Mario Galaxy 2, which attacked in a very similar manner. And finally, his down smash sees him swinging his pot all around him, first in front before sweeping it behind. Watch out! Alright, let's finally move on to the special attacks. And these were the hardest ones to figure out, especially when it came to what direction special they might be assigned to. So let's start off with the one that we know for sure, the recovery or up special, in which Piranha Plant spins around like a helicopter for some serious airtime. 
and at a pretty high speed too as seen in two separate clips. In one, it quickly flies straight up, demonstrating that it has an impressive vertical reach not only by completely clearing the flagpole, but it even continues off screen, whereas in the other clip, it rapidly flies to the side before descending. But interestingly, in that second clip, it doesn't descend nearly as much, which suggests that you give up some serious vertical distance in exchange for flying sideways. But here's a question, do you have completely free movement both up and down during the recovery as might be suggested with the player landing here? Or were they forced to land instead? Well, it's impossible to say for sure right now, but we might have an idea. Because while the entire flight time in the second longer clip is about 2.5 seconds, the actual ascent only lasts 1.5 seconds before it begins to descend. Whereas in the second clip, if we start the timer from when it actually starts flying, the scene ends up cutting away precisely at the 1.5 second mark, just as he flies off screen. Which is exactly when we'd expect the prompt plan to start descending if you were forced to, which would explain the sudden cut. So could it be they can gain altitude for a second and a half before being forced to land? Again, we can't say for sure at this point. Now, the remaining three special moves are where it starts to get really fuzzy in what direction they'll be assigned to. But before we get to them, do you remember how the trailer opened, with several characters being dazed and confused while Mario went out to investigate the source of the problem? Well, this next special attack actually answers that mystery, as it shows the prom plant spitting a purple poisonous glob, which ends up stunning Marth. And in a neat reference, the plant's colors actually change to match the appearance of the poison spitting putrid piana from the Paper Mario games. Pretty fitting! Now that color change might also reveal exactly how this move works. And we believe that it might be an attack that you have to charge up first. Because at the start of the clip, the plant is already in its poison colors. But you can see it squirming around just before a burst of ink appears around it, likely indicating that it's fully charged. The prom plant then reverts to its usual color, right before changing back to poison again when it actually spits out the projectile. At which point it again returns to its normal color. So this suggests that once you've prepared the poison by charging, you can run around and attack as normal until you're ready to spit it out. A little bit similar to Samus's charge shot. And speaking of which, since most charge attacks in Smash Brothers are a neutral special, that might be the case here too. Although, chargeable side specials aren't unheard of, and we think that's a distinct possibility, especially since that move is often used for more powerful projectiles. Moving on, another special is Prime Plant floating a spiked ball using only its breath before blowing it to the side. Now we actually see this move in two different clips, but in the second one, the player waits a bit longer before blowing it to the side, which almost certainly means that the player can float the spiked ball as long as they want by holding the button down. Unfortunately, while we would guess they can spit the ball to either side with the press of the control stick, we can't say that's how it works for sure, especially since both clips show it being blown to the right. In any case, this attack is taken directly from the Batui plants that we mentioned earlier, which could also float a spiked ball at various heights. Although, unlike the prom plant here, they could walk around while doing so. As for what direction special it could be, well, normally we would guess it might be a neutral special, since most specials that involve sucking or blowing air are neutral, like Kirby. Although being a down special is still a possibility. Or heck, maybe even a side special. And in that case, maybe the direction you activate it in dictates what side the ball drops on. And that brings us to its final special attack, where it retreats inside its pot before lunging out an impressive distance to land a powerful bite. And we can see it used in two different scenes, one where it shoots straight up, and another diagonally to the right, but only after rotating a bit while in the air. So the question is, do you have full control over the direction the prom plant faces? Or is that dependent on other factors, such as your forward momentum? Although, if we replay the clip slowly, we can see that the pot's forward momentum actually ends abruptly, just before when it begins rotating which might rule out the momentum idea and instead suggest that you are controlled. But then again, once it lands, we do see it roll down a bit before angling itself back up before the launch, which might mean it was settling into place? Again, it's tough to say exactly what's going on here, just as we're not sure what direction a special it might be. Although, given the various directions they can launch in, we'd guess it's either a neutral special or perhaps less likely a down special. Finally, we have its final smash in which it summons freaking Petey Piranha to stomp around while swinging a pair of cages. Which of course is a direct reference to his boss fight in Super Smash Bros. Brawl Subspace Emissary. Only this time, instead of kidnapping just princesses, he'll imprison anyone that touches his cage, as we see both Pikachu and Kirby get trapped inside. Now at first glance, it might appear that PD actually follows a prompt plant around, but we're pretty sure his movement's are actually random based on the inconsistent jump distances relative to the prom plant. Woo! So that covers it for all the attacks, that are shown in the trailer at least. But there are still a few more moves shown off that we haven't touched on yet. For instance, his crouch, where he ducks inside his pot. 
as well as his backwards and forward dodges. Oh, and then of course we have his taunts. One in which he snaps around in all directions, ending with a plumber-eating grin. Another where he twirls and then poses. And finally this one, where it does his best impression of its classic self. <laughs> you nailed it, buddy. Alright, we're just about done here, but there are still a few final details we wanted to point out. First up is this scene, which shows Squirtle taking on the role of Mario as he narrowly dodges a row of piranha plants. And good thing too, because remember, he's weak to grass types. Pretty clever. But as you might have noticed, there's seven of them, which is just enough to showcase a full range of alternate skin colors beyond the default one you've been looking at the entire trailer. And they're split evenly between pots and war pipes. And as you might have guessed, most if not all of those colors seem to be referencing some aspect of Prana Plant's history. So, going left to right, the green one with the yellow dots is how Prana Plants used to look way back in the original Super Mario Bros. on the NES. Next, the yellow one might be a reference to the gold Prana Plants from New Super Mario Bros. 2, even if it is missing the similarly colored stem. Although, for that reason, it could also be a reference to Mario Superstar Baseball, in which a yellow Prana Plant also appeared. The pink one might be a reference to the pink ones that could be found in Mario Kart 8's Sweet Sweet Canyon, or also possibly the head of Dino Piranha, whereas the black ones likely represent the inky prana plants from Super Mario 3D Land. The gray ones with dark spots might be referencing the bone prana plants from New Super Mario Bros. 2, and then the purple one is likely based on the prickly prana plant from Super Mario Galaxy, although a purple prana plant also appeared in Mario Superstar Baseball. And to wrap things up here, we have a light blue one that might be referencing the frost prana plants from the Paper Mario games. Finally, both the reveal and character trailers for the Prana Plant feature a couple of scenes of it sleeping, which is a little unusual, until you remember that Super Mario 64 also featured sleeping Prana Plants that would wake up if you got too close and made too much noise, which is exactly what happens when Luigi approaches in the overview trailer. <laughs> you gotta love it. And with that, we're finally done covering everything we could dig up on the Prana Plant. <laughs> dig up? Maybe that's why you can walk around now. But as always, let us know if we missed anything by posting in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and make sure to click that subscribe button for more Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and all things Nintendo 2.